Well, welcome back. If you uh, are returning, it's probably because you've enjoyed something that's been going on, so that's a good thing. If this is your first video, please uh, have a look at some of the other uh, have the other some look at some of the other videos and see if there's something that interests you. Um, so. <clears throat> The reason I'm doing this video is uh, just before I was uh, um, getting ready to tear down the board and uh, and, and set it up with the uh, AT tires for my uh, weekly ride, um, I thought I'd go over a little bit about what I've come to understand about electric skateboard bearings specifically and um, uh, some, of, some of the things you might find a little interesting. Um, so to start off with, um, there's a lot of very confusing nomenclature uh, that, that goes on when you're, when you're looking at how the bearings, how the different bearings are rated. And so the, uh, um, the one that you'll see the most of is the ABEC rating, and that's the one that I'm actually familiar with as, a, as an engineer. And basically it's a, a rating of, of a radial bearing. Um, the, uh, uh, anytime you insert a bearing into a pocket, that's a uh, pocket's referred to as an annulus. Um, and so the bearing is, therefore, it's an annular bearing. Um, it'll go in there. And so that's what ABEC actually stands for, is the uh, Annular Bearing Engineering Committee or Conference. It's a, a, a way for folks to get together and decide on how those bearings are going to be tested, what they're going to be rated to according to the results. And so then they get to fall into categories that an engineer can then order a radial bearing that will meet the specific needs of whatever it is they're trying to do. So uh, skateboarding um, is not really something that um, an engineering bearing uh, application would, would be applied for. The rotations are relatively slow, the loads are relatively slow. I'll get into some of the exceptions to that in a minute. Um, but uh, um, in an engineering application, you'll have a radial bearing to deal with motion of the wheel rotating. Okay, you'll even deal with the load on that rotating wheel. But if you have to deal with lateral loads or actual or torsional loads on the, uh, on the wheel, generally you deal with those from an engineering standpoint with a different application, you'll use a thrust bearing or something of that nature to control that motion. Well, obviously, for skateboarding, that's just not practical. The the forces are, they just don't merit it. And it's a, a recreational kind of a thing. If you did actually design that, you'd have some outrageous looking hub. And it's just not, not useful. And so the other uh, um, rating, if you'll call it that, that I see in regards to skateboards is a skate rating. Well, until they actually publish, uh, a skate rating really doesn't mean anything. It's just this bearing is better than that bearing. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, the uh, the only other um, engineering specification that I could find that really was of, of any use is an MOC rating, and that stands for Machined Optimal Clearance, and that has to do with basically how much of the bearing is encapsulated. So now we're on to something here. So now let me tell you a little bit about what happened to me. So, uh, uh, very excited, I got the board, I put the AT tires on, learned how to uh, ride with the slightly elevated deck height. I'm old school, so I was really used to a, a deck that was done, so that took a little while, and uh, just really, really enjoyed it. And uh, anybody who hasn't tried the larger all-terrain pneumatic wheels, whoo! give them a shot, because uh, it's an eye-opener as far as, even if you do street riding. It's just a much more uh, comfortable ride than a, uh, than a solid wheel. But what I discovered on this, and I didn't notice until it was too late uh, to, uh, to actually identify the actual individual bearing, you'll notice that what I've done here is, as I'm uh, ready to change, I've labeled the, uh, uh, the wheels uh, that are coming off now so that I can be sure that they go back on uh, where they came from so I continue my uh, my testing as far as the durability of these wheels. That's a topic for another video. But uh, I didn't mark these when I pulled them off except that I had them separated in front and rear. And then I went ahead and I pulled the bearings out. This was after, uh, I'm going to say probably 90, 90 miles or so. A little under 100 miles. 
And uh, so I, uh, I pulled them out. I wanted to inspect them because I was getting some clicking and that was related to just how these glass filled nylon rims allow the bearing to move slightly. The, uh, the, the um, bearing block, if you'll call that, where you have the two bearings and the bushing create a solid mass inside. And if the spacer is a different width than the uh, uh, than the, the actual space in between the bearings it can cause some shifting to go on uh, in, in between the wheel and again that's probably a topic for another video about ways that one might shim that out or um, uh, uh, make other allowances to for it but at any rate that again I, I will not get sidetracked on that too much but because of that clicking I had pulled the bearings out to do what Evolve had uh, suggested and that was actually to lubricate it. Basically that just placates you. You don't hear it so then therefore it's not happening, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, when I pulled the bearings out I set them aside in the same way that I had taken the wheels off. So, so I did know which wheels were front and which ones were rear, but uh, I didn't know which bearings were inner and which were outer. Now here's why that's important. Because I figured since I had them out I'd go ahead and clean and lubricate them. Well, front ones were fine, but I noticed when I was lubricating the rear bearings after I was finishing, just, you know, kind of, you know, uh, oh, I heard a click and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you know, what, what's, what's going on here? And so I, I looked, made sure that they were, you know, they were clean, that I hadn't maybe introduced something. You know, when you clean the bearings, you pull the, the, um, uh, the lubricant retainers off, the dust caps off, and then you agitate them and I thought oh you know shoot did I you know did I reintroduce something in there so I pulled them off and, and I had a look and um, two out of the bearings in the rear were um, quite affected and one was not bad now all of these you could lubricate them and stick them right back in there so I'm not saying that oh you know it's a disaster there you know the bearings go bad after 100 miles no, no that's not what I'm trying to say but what I am trying to say is, is that I did notice that there was accelerated wear on the back wheels. Now, you're all here because you want to get an engineer's take on it. Well, engineers always want to know why. So if you notice something like that, well, okay, so now let's start taking a look at why that might be. Well, the first and obvious culprit is that those are the drive bearings. Those are the wheels that are actually being driven. Now, um, if you'll look here, I've got a little clip showing um, some of the damage that's done to the rear wheel as opposed to the front wheels, which look relatively unscathed. I mean, you know, these wheels now have about 240, 250 miles on them. And so uh, uh, you can see kind of the difference now between you know, the front and the rear over a period of time. And the rears are markedly more tore up. And obviously, they're the ones that are driving you forward. Well, with the AT tires, all of those forces are heavily magnified. The axle is at a greater distance from the edge of the wheel, so it's got a lot more forces. So the radial forces, I don't think, are that big of a deal. But man, when you hit something, a rock or whatever, or when you're turning, the loads on that I'm just looking at that and I'm like, oh, those are probably tremendous, right? And so then what I started to do was, I'm like, okay, so now let's take a look and see what we could achieve with a higher ABEC rated bearing. I don't know why I actually didn't even look to see what these were. Um, uh, or maybe even a different bearing that's of the same size. Hey, I'm, I'm all up for experimentation. Well, one of the first things that I came across was the um, bearings that were chosen by the slalom guys. Now these guys put lateral loads on those wheels that are just absolutely outrageous. Well, um, either they're changing bearings all the time or they know something that, that maybe some other people don't. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. And so what I, uh, what I discovered was is that they're using bearings that are manufactured using that um, uh, machined optimal clearance rating, the mock rating, and that most of them are using, most of the guys that are doing the slaloms uh, are using the oust uh, bearings with a uh, MOC rating of 9. And so what that does 
is that when you have a bearing that sits in its, uh, uh, in its race, the race doesn't come up very high on that radial bearing. It only really has to deal with just the, the center load on that, uh, on that ball bearing, right? Well, no one had really imagined that, okay, we're going to go ahead and see how far up we can extend that. When you do that on a machine basis, it, it builds up, it can build up heat, additional friction, maybe some other lubricants are involved. And so then you have to do things like, oh, you know, you're, you're limiting your range of, of, of how fast the bearing can turn and, and all that. So the, uh, um, in general, if you're going to have a radial bearing, then it's a radial application. You're not also doing it for, for torsional loads. Um, well, these guys are. They built the bearing uh, uh, race to come around the bearing further. Um, and uh, because of that, it handles those loads better. So I uh, installed those bearings in, uh, in the AT tires. Now I haven't had a lot of uh, opportunity to put miles on the AT tires. Um, about 100 miles or so, a little over 100 miles after I had uh, um, uh, installed those bearings. Haven't no I, I didn't notice any kind of uh, uh, issue with it. Um, I want to put a few more miles on it before I can actually do anything that's really kind of, you know, a, a, a be-all, end-all. Uh, what I did do was I went to the large uh, ABEC 11 and again, that ABEC 11, ABEC 11 is a, a brand of a wheel. Now, now we're not talking about the bearings anymore, but the ABEC 11 brand, uh, they make a 107 millimeter uh, solid compound wheel. And so I was excited to try those. And so I, I had pulled the all-terrain tires off. Well, I'm putting the AT tires back on uh, uh, again. And so uh, I can do a follow-up on this and, and let you know what I, uh, uh, what I discover. In the... Um, 250 miles or so that I put on these wheels, the uh, um, uh, they're fine. They're fine. I uh, um, just did a lubrication and inspection of them. Uh, no, uh, nowhere to uh, to speak of. And it's big, but it's not that big. So uh, um, uh, I can at least tell you that um, uh, this bearing combination and this bearing and wheel combination is. Uh, 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 superior to the it, this house bearings work really well. So now here's the kicker those front bearings They're fine They're fine. Not an issue. Not an issue with the front bearings. Why? Well Because they work just like a regular skateboard bearing. They don't have any of those loads on them They'll have maybe momentary uh, You know momentary loads when you hit something that will you know that will Try and turn the wheel sideways, and uh, uh, and then loads under steering uh, and and what that are not. I wouldn't say that they were uh, that they were excessive or amplified by the fact that you're also turning that wheel, forcing the board forward. Um, so uh, the oust bearings are a little pricey. They're about about fifty dollars a set. But here's the kicker. My recommendation on this would be. Don't bother using these on the front wheels. Use them on your drive wheels. Um, I don't think that there's any reason to use the uh, uh, the oust bearings on uh, on the front wheels. So um, anyway, that's uh, that's about it in a nutshell. Um, I'll be able to do to to go into a follow up on this a little later uh, after I've been able to put a few more miles on on these seven inch wheels and actually another set of seven inch wheels that I'm designing. Um, so we'll see how uh, how that goes. But I hope you found this interesting. Uh, um, and uh, uh, please like and subscribe if these are videos that you're uh, interested in seeing more of. And I'll keep them coming. Thanks for watching.